Good morning. What a joyous day it is for myself and Colleen to be here this morning. Um, and for myself, having just been inducted as the new minister, it's very intimidating standing in the vestry, looking at all the old stones that you have along the wall and um, seeing that most of them are older um, or are dated before my ancestors arrived in South Africa from Germany. So um, I do realize the long, long history you have both in this parish and especially um, in this church and very, very big shoes to fill. And uh, while I'm on shoes, I want to thank the Reverend George Rollo for his role in um, keeping up ministry and uh, continuing to look after the community the way he did. And uh, what a lovely service we had last week um, to say not goodbye, but au revoir to him. Um, what a wonderful thing that was for us to all do as well. And um, I want us to, before we start with our call to worship, just for a brief moment, all have a moment of silent prayer. Come, because you are invited. Come because you hunger. Come because you will be fed. Come for healing. Come for forgiveness. Come to this place, this space. Come to me, says Jesus. Just come. Amen. Now, under normal circumstances, if we weren't having a national health crisis, I would have had the, the young people, of which I only see grown up with us today, but I would have had them up front to help me with a, a wee demonstration. So now I'm forced to do it on my own, and you can all watch me and say, thank goodness it's not me having to stand up front doing that. So... I have a glass of water. Oh, where did I put it? Over here. I have a glass of water with me. And if I had this glass in my hand, and my sole objective for this morning was not to spill this water, to let it touch the ground, and I had to continue with the sermon and the rest of the service. Do you think that would be easy or difficult? Difficult. Yeah. I'm quite well geared. I have something that I don't need to page too much so I can just scroll. So I can work with one hand. But if I had to hold it here the whole time for the next 40 odd minutes to an hour, what do you think is going to happen to me? Yeah, I'm, my arm's going to get tired. And I'm not going to be very efficient because I can promise you 10 minutes into the service, the only thing I'm going to be thinking about is my arm and the pain of holding up this glass. So is there something I can do, except for holding up this glass for the whole service, that would cause me to not spill the water and to not let it touch the ground? Drink it. Who <laughs> that's very <really> refreshing. <laughs> continue doing what I'm doing. I can continue with the service. The water's all safe and sound. It's not touching the ground. And it's become part of my body. Now, why I use this image is I want to try to explain something about when we try to control things that aren't really ours to control. Things that are far away from us. The closer things get, and if I had to hold the glass out like that, it would have become increasingly harder to keep it there. The first thing I would have probably done with the glass of water as time progressed is I would have brought it closer to my body, because it's easier to manage it close to my body. But even better than that is having it in my body. 
Now, you will hear from our readings this morning that when we try to control things which aren't ours to control, when we put all our fears and problems on other people and other people's actions and other things and government advice and all of that, it's like handling something that makes you tired. It's like managing something that takes it out of you. Much of what we fear in life is outside of us. It depends on other people's words and actions. Much of the sadness and anxiety we experience in life is because of how other people act and what other people do. In our reading this morning, we'll hear Paul mentioning the peace of Christ that will support and keep us. And that peace comes when we stop trying to manage and negotiate things that aren't here but around there somewhere. When we stop trying to manage people and events that are outside of ourselves and start to focus on what is inside of ourselves. Let us pray. Holy Lord, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we are aware of all the things that demand our attention and how easily we are impressed with things in this world. All the glitters, all the tents, the latest fad, the lure of fame, the promise of wealth, the idols of many forms and names. We lay them aside now. May we find our way back to you, O oh God. May we walk the path, talk the story, believe the truth, know the moment, find the purpose, trust the word, hold the bread, share the wine, open the table, forgive the sinner, forgive ourselves. May we call to you and follow in your footsteps, and may we love your people. May we find our way back to you, O oh God, leaving all that hurts behind, all that's made, that makes us less than you have called us to be, all that dulls our lives, lies to us. May we find our way back to you, O oh God. Holy God, bind us together as your body, as we pray together in our hearts the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we did last week, I am going to try my best to recite the hymn for us as we cannot sing, unfortunately. Hymn 490, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. Raise the corner. She 
share the faith, heal the sick, and lead the blind. Just and holy is thy name. I am all unrighteousness, false and full of sin. First reading this morning is uh, going to be read by Liz Cameron, who you all know very well, and she's going to first read for us from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 to 14. Moses pleaded with the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why should you be so angry with your people whom you rescued from Egypt with great might and power? Why should the Egyptians be able to see that you led your people out of Egypt, planning to kill them in the mountains and destroy them completely? Stop being angry, change your mind, and do not bring this disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember the solemn promise you made to them to give them as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, and to give the descendants all that land you promised would be their possession forever. So the Lord changed his mind and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. We can now listen to him 600, the Spirit of God, and seen as the before next reading. Thank you.
Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. So then, my brothers and sisters, how dear you are to me, and how I miss you. How happy you make me, and how proud I am of you. This then, dear brothers and sisters, is how you should stand firm in your life in the Lord. Eudia and Sintich, please, I beg you, try to agree as sisters in the Lord. And you too, my faithful partner, I want you to help these women, for they have worked hard with me to spread the gospel, together with Clement and all my other fellow workers, whose name are in God's book of the living. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle magical attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always ask of him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human, human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, fill your minds with those things that are good, and that say of praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honourable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions, and the God who gives us peace will be with you. May the Lord bless these readings of his holy word. In the lessons this morning, we read about something very familiar to the human race. First, we read about the impatience of the Israelites while waiting for Moses to return from the mountain. We read about an interpersonal conflict in the congregation of Philippi. Two instances of very human reactions to life. But also two examples of how we are best to exhibit the love and peace of Christ in, in situations of conflict. For today, I would like to focus on the Philippians text, where Paul is writing to the leaders of the congregation in Philippi, or Philippi, I'm not sure how you pronounce that in English, in Afrikaans we would say Philippi. And he's writing to them under very challenging circumstances. When Paul is writing this letter, he is, in fact, in prison. He has been incarcerated for his work in spreading the gospel of Jesus and finds himself in a very depressing and dark place. But the wonderful thing to me has always been that Paul manages to write one of the most uplifting and inspiring letters in his collections of letters. And he writes it from this place of punishment and darkness. Philippians is the letter in which Paul writes 
or tells the congregation in Philippi to be joyful or happy. No less than 16 times in only 104 verses. How does someone who is imprisoned write a letter to people who still have their freedom to some extent and writes a letter as joyful and as uplifting as his letter to the Philippians? He must have something special. He refers to this something special as the peace of Christ. From Paul's life and his letters we are able to see or to say that this peace of Christ is different to peace as we often think about it. If I ask you this morning to define peace, most of us would say that it is the absence of conflict. But the peace of Christ, as Paul writes about it, is something different to simply the absence of conflict. It is the type of peace that endures even in the midst of conflict. It is a state of wellness even in times of turmoil and illness. It is a state of wholeness even when everything around you is broken and fragmented. It is a state of closeness, even when everything and everyone feels far and distant. The peace Paul refers to is the peace we access when we stop trying to control things which aren't ours to control. When we stop trying to control people or things that are outside of ourselves. In his letter, Paul refers to the conflict between Neodia and Syntyche. We do not know what the conflict was about. But Paul reminds them of the union in the Lord and that they should celebrate this even when they differ in opinion. Paul reminds them that there is more at stake than one of them being right and the other being wrong. It is about Christ and His Church. In our Old Testament reading, we see that once again, like they did so very often, the Israelites had lost trust in Moses. If you read the whole Exodus story, you will notice how often the Israelites criticize and question Moses, even though he is doing what God tells him to. Most of the times when the Israelites rebel against Moses, it is because they feel out of control. They want to be in control of what is happening to them. They want to be in control of where they are going and what they do. And in our reading this morning, we see that when Moses goes up to the mountain, once again, the lack of control is something that leads them to do what they did. They can't control what's happening to them and decide to make something that will give them back the control, the golden calf. Isn't it just a very human thing to do? To try to control things, to make our lives better, to make our lives more manageable. We try to take control of things outside of ourselves because we believe that it will make life better for us. Psychology has a word for this. Now my training, as I said previously, was in Afrikaans, so I'm not sure if it might be the same term used in English, but translated it said, psychology calls this an external locus of control. This is when we believe that all that ails us will be better if other people and other things acted the way we expected them to. If only this one will be friendlier with me, my life would be better. If only the government won't tax me so much, I would live more comfortably. If only my spouse would speak kinder to me, we wouldn't have marriage problems. If only the bars would close earlier, well that has become very real, I wouldn't have a drinking problem. 
If only the minister would preach better sermons, I would enjoy coming to church. If only so and so would take my advice, we would all be happy. Trying to control, not myself, but the people and the events and the things around me to try to improve and to try to have peace. When we have this external locus of control, when we try to manage everyone else and control situations outside of our control, rather than managing ourselves, that is when we miss out on the peace of Christ. The same peace that helps Paul to cope with being in prison. The same peace that causes Moses to beg God to forgive the Israelites instead of insisting that God avenge their insubordination. How do we experience the peace of Christ? It's very simple and yet it's one of the hardest things to do. We let go. The peace of Christ comes when we accept that we cannot control other people's actions. When we accept that life is unfair and being a Christian doesn't mean we are immune against disappointment and loss. The peace of Christ becomes a reality when we don't rely on other people, events or things to make us happy but are able to find the centre of our faith, the love and grace of God in the midst of the turmoil of living a human life on this earth. The peace of Christ comes to us when we surrender to it and stop looking for worldly peace by trying to control circumstances, trying to control people's actions. What a wonderful privilege to stand here in this historic building, on this historic site today, in the start of a new ministry. And I didn't choose these readings. These readings are the ones for today in, um, that we're supposed to read all over the Kirk this morning. But in the start of my ministry here in Montreux and Kaba, my biggest wish for myself and for you is that we always, always experience the peace of Christ. The peace that surpasses all understanding, as one of the older translations always said. Because it is a peace that exists in times of turmoil and conflict. It is a peace that doesn't go away when there is personal conflict and differences. It is a peace that doesn't go away in the face of loss or illness. It is a peace that sustains and binds us all to the giver of life. So my prayer for us here at the start of a new journey is that the peace of Christ will sustain us in times of happiness and joy, but that we can experience that same peace also in harder times. May the peace of Christ come to us when we surrender to it and relinquish control of things, people and situations that we cannot control. I want to conclude by reading the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi and it says something beautiful to me about letting go and surrendering to the peace of Christ. And this is my prayer for myself and for us as a congregation on this new journey. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, 
joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Let us pray. Loving God, we are the body of Christ, created in your image, known and loved by you, loved for who you are. We are accepted, forgiven and restored, united to live in your ways. We are nourished by faith helping us in our daily lives to face the challenges of each day to carry us through times of illness, grief and anxiety, replenishing and restoring us, building us up as your people. We are called to serve the lost, the lonely and the deserted, through our words and our actions to be the hands and the feet of our church. Be with us to feed us with compassion that we might dine on your grace, that we might be filled with your spirit as we live our faith in the world today. We are challenged to love, to love our families through times of both joy and trial, to love our friends and neighbours even if they annoy or irritate, to love our enemies in the face of their anger and malice. So. Lord, nourish our faith that we might have love to show others the love Christ has shown us. Living God, we thank you that you hold us together in love. We are the body of Christ. You help us to grow and mature. We are nurtured by faith. You develop our compassion. We are called to serve. You make us active and strong. We are challenged to love. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 556, I Need Thee Every Hour. Oh, I need. 
goes with a benediction. Just um, to remind you that as you exit, we are ex you came in through that door and we are exiting through that door. And I am going to ask that after we've concluded the service, that everyone sitting in that block, starting at the back row, start exiting from that side. So we're going row for row just to minimize the contact um, in these very strange times. And talking of strange times, you would have noticed that um, Karlene is recording this morning and uh, that is going to be put up on our Facebook page later today. I would say at about half past one, two o'clock. Um, so you can look out for that. And uh, you can also, you would have taken note of my contact details that would have been given to you. Um, feel free to notify me if you want to be added to a mailing list and a text list. What will happen is as we continue recording in the meantime and whatever we decide to do in the future, it is easy for me to send you an email with the link to the video or a text even if you prefer. So please um, do make use of that and notify me that you want to be added to the mailing list. Let's close with the benediction. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep watch over our hearts and minds, now and forevermore.